Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we're honored to be here with Stacy Dodd. He's a regional manager with Vertava Health. Stacy, how are you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So you do a tremendous amount of good with Vertava Health, and we'll talk all about the efforts when it comes to working with our veterans, drug and alcohol addiction, behavioral health. There's so much that you do, but give us a little backstory. When you talk about Vertava Health, give us a little bit of history and context. So uh, we opened up a facility in South Haven in 2015, and uh, recently uh, we rebranded to Vertava Health. Uh, Currently, we have a a really uh, beautiful uh, inpatient residential detox center in South Haven at I-55 and State Line Road. We also have a really nice uh, outpatient center uh, on Sweeney Road right across from Brown Baptist, and we also have outpatient clinics now in uh, Memphis, Bartlett, Jackson, and Nashville. Talk about all the different things. Give us a little bit of an a la carte walkthrough, if you will, of the services and the specializations. So we offer detox, residential, partial hospitalization, intensive outpatient, and virtual care. Um, Our clinical model consists of dialectical behavioral therapy, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, medicated assisted treatment, motivational interviewing, and EMDR. And when you look at what that means for your team, for their specialization, talk about the team. So uh, currently, just at our South Haven location, we actually have four residential locations, one in uh, Texas, Ohio, uh, Massachusetts, and Mississippi currently. Uh, At our South Haven location, we have approximately 140 uh, team members, nurses, doctors, psychiatrists, uh, the full team. And um, uh, we really love our patients uh, and we really we actually stick with them for life through a new alumni program we have. Uh, We have a circle app, uh, but we stay connected to them 24 seven once they graduate. And they also have uh, enormous support in our community, uh, locating jobs, long term housing options and, and things like that. Let's go ahead and stay on that thread because that is an important element when you look at keeping in touch and maintaining the connections like with your app and the alumni. So talk about why that's so important to maintain those connections all the way through. Um, So, you know, when they arrive at our facility, many times uh, they're in bad shape and, you know, things aren't so good. And so when they meet our teams, you know, we love on them, we support them, we get them, you know, we get them clinically healthy, medically healthy. And then there comes a time where they step down to lower levels of care. And so we stick with them through all of that and you know, hold them accountable at the same time. And, uh, but we stick with them once they graduate. And so once you graduate from you know, in treatment and recovery and you have to go back into the world, you know, some people have you know, a lot of support and some people don't have so much support. So we are that support system. We stay connected, that app, they can reach out to us in a matter of seconds and we can be with them uh, virtually. Um, but also you know, we, uh, our new alumni program um, is very powerful and we are doing things in the community. We're doing events. I was actually at an event uh, last weekend with our alumni. And so it's all of our graduates that come together, support each other, uh, love on each other and stay connected. And we also, if, if they have a need or they have something they're struggling with, we can also help them with that. And if they are struggling really bad, we can get them back really quickly. <laughs> Talk about where it starts. So the intake process, how does it begin? So um, our call center uh, receives about, I think, 9,000 calls a month. Uh, They are available 24-7. We have a very powerful team across the United States. And so if if someone calls our facility uh, or our call center, I'm sorry, um, there's someone that's going to start walking them through the process. Immediately, they're going to say, you know, get, get their information, find out where they are, what they're struggling with, and how quick we can get them in. We do offer same-day admissions. Uh, we do offer transportation. And uh, one key component um, that is very important is that we treat veterans. And so we are connected to the, to the Veterans Administration. And we, I think we have currently around 14 referring Veterans Administrations, uh, including the Memphis VA. And uh, we treat a lot of veterans. So I think today we have 130 patients maybe in our care out just out here in South Haven alone. And about 50% of those are veterans. Wow. Talk about numbers overall, because you've already had a very large impact when you look at the number of individuals served. So talk about some of the numbers. 
So uh, approximately, you know, since I started in 2015, I had the honor of being in, on site at the facility for the first seven years I worked with Vertava. And um, we had about 6,000 people that came through our program uh, during the six years I was there. Um, and, you know, it, it's a beautiful thing to get to see so many, you know, real life transformations, but that's why, you know, I, I've been watching the program work for a very long time and I know that it's really powerful and I know that it works. Uh, when you attend a graduation and get to hear the story from beginning to end, you know, it, it's really, really powerful. And I believe that we have, um, I believe that we have a very uh, unique balance uh, with the clinical care, the medical care, also the spirituality part of it. You know, we, the spirituality part is, is offered on an elective basis. So they have to sign up for what groups they go to in the evenings. So they're not in, they're not encouraged or influenced in any direction when it comes to spirituality. Uh, we offer yoga, you know, expressive art therapy, which is really popular. We have Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, you know, Celebrate Recovery, Church, you know, they, they have all those options. And so they get to pick, you know, whatever, you know, spiritual, you know, direction they want to go in. They get to choose that themselves. Carry that forward for those uh, who don't know exactly like what the process is, what that means, but have loved ones or friends family members who are struggling with this, who they're thinking, this is really something that, you know, we need to, to talk about. How, how does it work and how can we kind of educate people so that they can communicate that to their loved ones? So many times uh, people in recovery, I'm in long-term recovery myself. I've been clean 22 years. I used to be homeless actually in Memphis uh, and up in Missouri where I'm from. But the family, many times the, the addicted uh, individual won't listen to their family. Many times that, you know, the family, you know, comes across as judgmental or, you know, they've been listening to it for years or whatever the case may be. It's just something that's a pretty common denominator when it comes to, um, to, to addressing the issue. So a lot of times, you know, if they will reach out to us, a lot of times a complete stranger can actually reach them and, and, and speak with them, possibly do an intervention uh, or educate the family on how to approach the, the issue uh, what I've learned in my life and in my years uh, working in recovery is that, you know, I, I just make the resources available. Uh, I let them know, hey, we have this great program. Here's a link. You can take a virtual tour. I would love to give you an in-person tour. You know, I will walk with you, you know, during your recovery process and support you. And we have all these great things. And, and normally, you know, sometimes nothing happens for a week or two, but usually the phone rings, the, you know, we get a text saying, hey, I'm ready. So, uh, you know, we really... Um, Considering just just at this location alone, considering we've had six thousand people come through, we we know what works and we know what doesn't, and we also know how to how to engage them uh, on a level that's a little bit more advanced than than most. Absolutely. Talk about the impact of the pandemic. I think that uh, the pandemic. I mean, obviously, we're still dealing with everything, even though we're hopefully coming out. But the impact, the toll both mentally with behavioral health and then obviously how that manifests with drug and alcohol addiction and coping. How has the pandemic impacted, you know, what you've seen on your end? So the pandemic has obviously caused many problems, uh, job losses, uh, financial, you know, strains, um, and a lot of mental health, you know, struggles. And recently we launched a mental health only, um, strictly mental health program over at our old court location in Memphis on uh, Poplar. And uh, we have an enormous amount of patients uh, currently that are in just for mental health. And so they're, they're able to come in and we're able to help them uh, both in person and also virtually. Um, you know, everything, gas prices, I mean, the, the pandemic, you know, everything going on today, it just seems like it continues to come. And so we, we have the full services across the United States. Uh, we can help anyone anywhere. Uh, all you have to do is reach out and call. What are some of the things, and I'm thinking around like, you know, misconceptions, things like that, that you wish people knew when it comes to behavioral health, drug and alcohol addiction, combating that, what are some of the common myths or things that you wish people better understood? Um, I, I was at a, at a conference yesterday um, here in South Haven, and the, the lady that was speaking uh, is actually a doctor, and she was... Um, she was talking about how we need to normalize it. 
uh, we need to talk about it more. Um, you know, it, it doesn't need to be something that people are ashamed to talk about. Um, it needs to be more of a, I mean, we all know that we all have our own different struggles, right? And we all, you know, have family members and loved ones and, and you know, coworkers that are struggling with different things. And we need to be able to talk about it more openly. But people also need to know that, that we're here to help. And, um, you know, there, there's lots of things going on across the country right now, you know, across the globe, um, as far as mental health goes. I think there's a new number coming out. I think it's 988. Don't hold me to that. And instead of 911, it's a mental health crisis number. Uh, and also just remember that our, our um, you know, our team is available 24-7. I'm available 24-7. Um, you can reach out to me at 662-420-9421, or uh, you can call 1-877-VERTABA at any time. And we're there to support. Our teams will talk them through whatever situation they're going through. Uh, you know, if they're in a crisis, you know, if they if they're not sure what to do, the family or the or the one that's struggling can call, and we will help you through that. Yeah, and and I think it goes back to like you said, knowing where to turn the resources, but also like who can you turn to, and you know, like you mentioned before, if if it's a family member that could be deemed as judgmental, and so they tune that out. But having someone who's kind of an independent third party to step in who's been there, who understands, but also understands the power of healing can step in and open up that conversation. That's where the, the power is. I know that uh, sure Memphis, and there's a lot of organizations that are, that are really diving into this subject. And, you know, it's something that CEOs, you know, are struggling with. So in other words, this deals with every faith, every uh, race, every economic mm -hmm. level. Like when you talk about this, this permeates our community all throughout all different levels, all different, you know, which ways at the same time, though, these are things that your coworkers are dealing with that you might not even know. Right. And so what are some of the things, the signs that we need to be looking for? What are the things that we need to be more um, focused on and paying attention to, to be able to then offer that support? Uh, I would say whenever someone begins to isolate, uh, whenever someone shows signs of anxiety uh, or depression, um, you know, uh, whenever if they're maybe missing work a lot or there may be, um, I, you know, th those are the things I would I would look for. Um, isolation is a big one. Um, you know, there's all kinds of groups in, in our communities that to support people. What I've learned is many people don't know where those groups are. Many people don't know things like Celebrate Recovery. You know, Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered uh, recovery program. I'm actually a state representative for them, for the uh, CR Inside, which goes in the jails and prisons. But you can go to the CR app and type in your zip code and groups are gonna pop up. For instance, there's probably about 20, 25 in the Memphis Metro, Northwest Mississippi, you know, the, um, the area, the close area, you know, proximity here. And those groups meet weekly and, and they're there for support. They have open share groups, they have step study groups, they have all these groups where people can come and talk about what's going on. Uh, you know, we, we, we heal when we share and when we share, we heal. And it, it doesn't always, you know, it does not really important on who we share with. As long as we share, we're actually venting our feelings. And when, when that comes out, we begin to heal. And we also, you know, come across solutions and, you know, we get led to solutions and get led to people that'll help us. Uh, I was in a, in a meeting yesterday with the, it's called the spiritual care network. And it's a, it's a lot of mental health and, uh, you know, church professionals, people come together and we just talk about who we are and what we do so we can better work together. Uh, and it was all about mental health yesterday. It was all, I mean, it was, it was great. And uh, it's, it's something you might want to look into if you're interested, it's called the spiritual care network. Uh, there's a, there's a chapter in Memphis, you know, DeSoto County, Arkansas and, and so forth. So, uh, there's a lot of people that are really passionate uh, about this, and there are a lot of people that love helping people, and it, it's a great honor uh, to, to be have access uh, to these to people's lives and that that need your help. It, it's really a great honor. It's not an inconvenience. It's really a great a great treasure. So, well, and the fact that you are you know the first to say, hey, I'm here to help. I'll share my story. You've written books. I mean, you you do so much to pour in and be that resource, but be that light for people. I think that's very important, just like you're talking about. What's one more thing that you wish everyone knew about Vertaba Health? Uh, so first of all, I, I'll give you my personal promise uh, that we'll take very good care of your loved ones. We will treat them like their own family and we will never give up on them and we will never not be there for them. Uh, and, you know, one of the key things for me uh, as being at the facility for so long is I wanted our patients and our team to know that we love them. 
and that we cared for them. And it wasn't just, they're not just a number. They're not just, you know, you know, someone that we're trying to get in there for money. It's more about a passion to help others. And our team is full of passion. Uh, we have an incredible uh, medical director, Dr. Sean Hamm. We have, you know, incredible nurses, incredible family nurse practitioner. I mean, we have an incredible, very large team of people that actually and truly care about their future. Uh, one of our hashtags is live out your best future. I mean, that, that's what we focus on. And so we treat the whole person, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get them healthy from beginning to end, you know, for, from their health to their clinical part, you know, everything we can think of to help them, even the long-term housing option that we have uh, for our veterans and for our patients, uh, you know, we, we stick with them for the, for the long term. And we know that the longer someone stays in treatment, that the better chances they have. And so, you know, if I could say anything, I would just say, you know, we want to build your trust uh, and we will, we will, you know, do the very, very best that we can to take care of your loved ones. And all you have to do is reach out. Uh, if you reach out to me directly or reach out to our team, we're going to take it from there and, and we're going to be, you know, we're going to be aggressive and as far as helping them. Yeah. And that's the perfect segue into one more time sharing your contact information. So website, phone number, where do we go to connect in and learn more about Vertava Health? So we have an incredible presence on LinkedIn and on Facebook. Uh, you can go to vertavahealth.com. You can go to vertavahealthmississippi.com to view our local uh, facilities. There's also a virtual tour link on uh, YouTube. It's called Vertava Health Mississippi. You can take a virtual tour of inside of our facilities. It shows the nurses, shows the facility, shows everything that we do uh, in about two minutes. So it's really great. Uh, and then you can reach out to me directly at 662-420-9421. Or you can reach out to one eight seven seven Vertava, and that's V E R T A V A. So VertavaHealth.com. Stacy, thank you for all you and your amazing so, team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it.